this is our lives now for the next what five years or so maybe longer we are going to turn this into our dream home by we do you mean me this is quite possibly the grossest thing Down a house. Alright, what's next? Hi, I'm Russell Stoker. And I'm Laura Stoker. And we are Life Done Simple. Uh, we have six children. Uh, they, we had them all in seven years. Oldest is 12, our no, youngest is five. Yeah, no twins, no nothing, <laughs> singles. Closest so, together are a year and a day, and that was that was as close to twins as we need to get. We're good with that. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of made life a little crazy. Uh, it's kind of ironic that our name is Life Done Simple. <laughs> That's why it needs to be simple, because it's complex. <laughs> That's true, good point. Uh, but I guess our goal is to keep it, like, back to the basics, like, you know, there's a lot of things in the world right now that distract from family. And we really love family. It's an important thing to us. Uh, so being rich isn't one of those things. Now, granted, everybody likes to have a little bit of money to meet <laughs> your needs. But we're trying to figure out ways to make our life the richest with what we have. So I am a school teacher, high school teacher. Um, so it's a good thing we're not trying to get rich. Yeah. I, I m mainly teach agriculture. Uh, and yeah, like you, like Lars said, not gonna get rich as a teacher. He's also teaching art though and business. So what you'll find out about this guy is he's really talented. He's got a lot of skills and abilities. It's pretty amazing all the th different things that he can do and it really comes in handy, especially during our new project that we're working on, which is what we're gonna tell you about. Yeah, so throughout our 14 years of marriage, um, I would say we are outside of the box thinkers. Um, we've. Our first house we bought was a duplex um, as a, I guess it was originally our retirement plan. We bought a limousine not too <laughs> far ago. This is, this is not exaggerated. We really did buy a limousine. <laughs> okay, now let me explain why. It's hard to find an eight passenger vehicle anymore. You can find seven passenger vehicles, but eight passengers are tough. We didn't have a lot of money. So well, I was cruising okay. the classified ads and I found a limousine. And Joe, I said, hey, we should drive this around. It was in 1995, so it was 20 years old. And it had very low miles too. Yeah, yeah only about 50,000 miles and on it. And it was only like $2,500 for the miles. Yeah, and, I, and so then so, after I initially joked, I thought about it. We had a good laugh it. about it for a minute. And I actually feel like I was the one that said, wait a minute, this might actually work, but maybe you did, I don't know. What do you feel? We're a team. <laughs> we can't decide, we you know, our, our thoughts just go together so well, I don't know. Yeah, so we thought, this might actually work. So I went down and Russell looked at it. Russell might be a genius again. Like, does this <laughs> guy ever have any end of amazing ideas? I don't know. Yeah, right. I went down so, there, it ran good. Um, it was kind of cool, so I bought it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not, it wasn't your fancy, uh, you know, sideways seats and wet bar in there. It was three <laughs> bench seats, but it was really practical, tons of leg room. And there wasn't a dividing wall, so sadly that wasn't no glass for the limo. Wall, yeah. That's okay. Uh, but we always made an entrance wherever we went. People would watch carefully. Who's going to cut a limo? Because they must be important, I'm sure. Well, and people always counted our kids at, <laughs> anywhere we went, so at least now they had an excuse to stare. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we drove that for quite a while. We actually put 30,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. I really love to repurpose things, whether it's um, 
you know, is an old tool and turn it into a coat hanger or horseshoes and make a toilet paper roller. So I have to tell you, the moment I realized how smart this guy is, I don't know, it was amazing to me, is one time his tool broke and he used his tools to fix that tool. And I was like, whoa, you're a genius. You just fixed a tool with some tools. Like, I don't know how you did that. That's <laughs> what separates us from the apes, Maybe I'm guess. easily impressed. I don't know. But I was like, yeah, this guy is freaking smart. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and well, I enjoy this outside of the box thinking. I enjoy recycling things for a new purpose. So, another way that we're an out of the box thinker is we're not afraid to try a new state or a new location. Like, we've never been scared of that. We've never felt like, well, we need to stay within a 30 mile radius of this location. It's never been like that for us. So we just kind of feel guided to where we need to be and we're pretty open to new experiences and new places. So that's been a lot of fun. Other outside of the box thinking, we actually lived in a fifth wheel camper before. Did we talk about the dark ages? I mean. <laughs> Well, yeah, small town, we couldn't find anywhere to rent, so, you know, We're whatever. kind of homeless Think in our outside camper, of the box. I guess, but... Um, and, and I was kind of inspired by the tiny house movement in a lot of ways. And that experience, we were eight of us living in about 300 square feet. Uh, uh, I realized that our tiny house has to be much bigger, right? <laughs> we decided on Nebraska, and... Uh, we just wanted to give it a try. We thought, uh, it'd be a good place as any. But really, we love it here. This is great. We grew up in the Inner Mountain West, and I didn't think I wanted to leave the mountains behind, you know? I mean, I was used to them on the horizon, um, but I really do love the plains. And uh, that's why I call this the uh, Nebraska, the first frontier, okay? Because I like... You know, some of these reality TV shows where they go to Alaska and they make a, a life there. They homestead, do all these things, raising their own animals, right? I mean, that's all cool, fun. I like that kind of thing. I thought, man, that'd be awesome to do. I actually even looked for jobs up there. Uh, mm -hmm. There really aren't any, and the cost of living is so high. I thought, well... Maybe Nebraska can be our Alaska, okay? So, this was the first frontier, kind of, in a way. I mean, the settlers came to the eastern U.S., and they skipped over the plains for the most part. Uh, you'd have the gold rushes in California and Oregon, and nobody was staying here in the Dakotas and Nebraska. But this is relevant to your life because this could change your life. And let me tell you why. This frontier got skipped over. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of cheap land and cheap housing available here. Um, if you can't make a ton of money, you, another way to give yourself a raise is to spend less money. So rather than bringing more in, yeah, keep what you've got. Most of you probably have a vehicle loan for more than my house payment. Just saying. So True. that's been a good thing. It helps towards our goal of getting out of debt. To know that we could pay off our house in five years or less is pretty amazing to have the deed in hand. That's, I mean, usually you think 30 year mortgage, that's what we're gonna have. It's just kind of what you're used to expecting. So that's pretty exciting for us. Yeah, and I mean, to not have a house payment every month is going to be huge for us. Um, so with that, though, we pretty much have to rebuild this place from top to bottom. It's a project. <laughs> it was a bargain. Um, but you know what? I enjoy that. I love knocking things down and making them into something different and... Yeah, you'll find with Russell, like, we'll be renting a place and he can't do anything because it's a rental. You know, he can't fix it up. He can't change it. He actually gets pretty down. He's a lot happier when he's like, hey, I can tear down a wall. I can do this. I can do that. Like, you know, when there's options available to him, he's a much happier guy, which is interesting. Well, you know, I just like that. I let those creative juices flow. And uh, <laughs> that's one way to do it. We ended up 
finding an opportunity that kind of took us a different direction. Um, a new limo, per se. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we bought was an old store, okay? So built back somewhere in the 20s or 30s. And half of it was a dry goods store and half of it was a grocery store. Um, um, but on the main floor, we're looking at about 2,600 square feet, um, which is pretty sizable, but it's, you know, it's manageable. And for eight of us, I don't think it's unreasonable. It's definitely not a tiny house. Mm -hmm. but. So anyways, we bought this old building, um, and we'll just cycle these pictures on so you can see. But it was originally dry goods and a grocery store, and has been many things from what I've been told. I've heard tell of it being a movie theater. Um, it was definitely a post office in the recent past. Mm -hmm. Now, currently, they're the only store we have is a vending machine that is never full of anything. Yeah, it's anything. not working, so <laughs> I don't know what that uh, So there's nothing here. We like to produce our own food. Right? I've got a bunch of chickens out in the yard right now. Uh, we're going to be butchering our own beef soon. Um, other ways we've adapted to this type of life is um, using freeze-dried food. It doesn't go bad. We reduce waste. doesn't need to be refrigerated. And it's um, so much easier. Yeah, convenient. I mean, there, we'll, we'll go on and on. And, and we'll talk about more about that later, too. But that's another thing that's helped us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just really want you to follow us on this journey and, you know, just enjoy our life story. And the difference with this uh, video is we're just regular people that are doing this on a budget. So it's fun to watch those remodel shows where in an hour you can see a house go from crap to amazingness. But with us, it's definitely going to be a process. It's going to be step by step, um, depending on our budget and our resources. You know, it'll be slow and steady, but we're pretty excited about it and it'll be fun to go along for the ride. Yeah. And I think, you know, some of our recycling outside of the box thinking, we're going to try to keep, I'm just an estimate, but our total renovations to um, 15, 20,000. That's what I was thinking too. Somewhere in that range. Uh, and maybe you're like, what? I can't even redo my kitchen for that. Well, I think it's reasonable. I think we can do this. Especially when you can do your own work, when you're willing to use, like um, we're gonna look for probably used cabinets, things like that. You're reutilizing things to make them uh, fresh again. That definitely, takes a lot off the budget, so that'll be great. Yeah. Really, there's, you know, not a lot of things you have to buy new. Screws, drywall, insulation. You can't really get those types of things used, but a lot of stuff you can, and those are usually the things that are expensive, okay? Um, so, yeah. Enjoy the ride. Make sure you like Follow, share, comment. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what you think. Only if they're good comments.